What is going on guys? Rob here with RK Motorsports. Today we're going to continue working on the Triumph Daytona 675 build. We have our new pieces that we ordered and we're going to get this thing ready to hit the road. <laughs> All right, guys, so in the last episode, we went over kind of some of the damage that this bike had, some of the things that we needed to do in order to convert it from the track bike to the street bike. Now that we have our street fairings, we are gonna throw those on the bike after we install the few parts that we had to order. Uh, a couple of those parts were the left-hand control, uh, the kickstand, and the tail light. So I have the left control right here. We have an OEM used kickstand, so we're gonna install that on the bike, and we have our tail light in this box here. One thing that I did notice in the last episode, this coolant was pretty low, so that's probably one of the first things that I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna change the coolant, flush that out, I'll install these new parts, we'll do an oil change, then we will get these fairings back on the bike and we will get ready to rip this thing on the road for its maiden voyage. So I've got the left hand control on here now. Next what I need to do is I need to plug this into the wiring harness. But if you follow this where the wiring harness is, you can see we have like a partial plug right here and a toggle switch. So what I'm thinking this is for, um, there's another thing that we need to plug in up here also. It's also the, like the clutch safety switch right here. So this little guy plugs right into this hole right here on the side. And basically that's kind of like a safety for knowing if the clutch is pulled in or not. It allows the bike to start. Basically this is just bypassing the clutch safety sensor. So we do not need this anymore because we are not gonna be using it as a track bike. So we can plug this in here. So we got that plugged in there, and then I'll just go ahead and plug this in, and then we will be all set with our left hand control. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the coolant flush on this bike, just because there wasn't a lot of coolant in the radiator. So I'm just gonna top this off with some distilled water, and then we're gonna run the bike up to temp and let that get through the system. So I was testing out our controls for our new left hand control and I hit the horn button and the horn did not work. So that is another thing that was removed when this got converted to a track bike. So I do have a horn that we can throw on here. I'm just gonna be bolting it up to this spot right here and then we just have to connect our connections for the horn and we can get that thing up and going. There we go, so we got our horn plugged in and connected to the lower triple right there. So let's see if it works now. Oh yeah, nice, working good. So now the coolant is cooled off, so we're gonna drain that and then flush it and then fill the system with new coolant and we will be all set and then we can move on to our oil change. Oh, this is nasty. I think somebody was just running straight water in this thing because that looks like it is rusty. So I believe all of that is, um, I'm thinking it's rust from the inside of the motor, just from the water that was in the cooling system. Now, when you run a track bike on the track, usually they like you to run water um, instead of coolant because if the bike goes down on the track, the coolant can be slick and it can cause riders to crash where if it's just water, it'll evaporate and dry up and you won't have any dangerous conditions on the track where incidents can happen. So now that we've got that out, I'm gonna fill it, flush it a couple more times and then we're gonna fill it with regular coolant and then we will be all set.
All right, so now that we've flushed it a few times, we've got some pretty clear water coming out. So now we're all set. We can let this fully drain and then I'm gonna add the coolant and then we will be all set. Now you can see right here we have this, it looks like a little hose clamp that was wrapped around the oil filter. Now this was just for kind of like safety purposes as like a tie off for the drain plug, that way the drain plug doesn't back off. So we're not gonna need this anymore, so I'm just gonna trim that wire after I get it removed. Um, so we're gonna take this oil filter off and then drain that oil and then we can continue with our oil change. And I'm just gonna go and clean the surface where the oil filter sits. Just give that a quick little wipe down. And we have our HF204 oil filter. We've got, the O-ring is pre-greased, so we're gonna slap this right on here. And we're just gonna hand snug that onto the motor. There we go, all right. And we're gonna throw that back on there, and then we're gonna fill this thing up with oil. Now you can see right here, we have another safety wire tie off on the oil cap right here. Now, because we are gonna be converting this back to street, we don't necessarily need these safety wires anymore. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. And now we can fill the bike up with our Mobile One Racing 4T oil. So now that we have our bike all cleaned up, we got the frame nice and clean, got rid of all that dust. There was a lot of that dust that was in here underneath in the battery tray. We got that all cleaned up. So let's move on to the fairings and get those things cleaned up because they are super dusty. So let's get some detailing spray on there and get those nice and shiny.
All right guys, so I was able to get that front fender on. I also put a couple extra trim pieces on, a couple of those side inner fairings and that little lower trim piece right there. So this thing is all back together now. So let's hit the road and take this thing for its maiden voyage and test her out. There we go, starts right up. Huh? 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 